Hi, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme one, element 13, additional coastal landforms. Equipment out, I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. There are a variety of other coastal landforms which we're going to be looking at today. These include beaches, spits and rock pools and they're produced by a variety of processes along the coastline. So let's start off by looking at beaches. Beaches are created by the deposition of sediment, silt, sand, it could be uh, stone and shingle, along the coastline. And that's created by waves. So there are two types of waves we can discuss. One of them is a constructive wave, which is the diagram that we can see here, and the other is a destructive wave. Now beaches are created at constructive waves. So what that means is that they've got a stronger swash than the backwash. So the swash is the wave that goes up the beach. So that wave is going to be carrying sediment up the beach. When it loses its energy, it's going to drop it high up on the beach. But because the backwash is really weak, it can't carry it all back down into the sea again. So it's going to leave the majority of that material on the beach, and that's going to build up over time. So beaches are predominantly in areas where it has significant amounts of constructive waves all year round. That might change over the year, as we're going to see in another lesson, in next lesson, we're looking at factors that can influence change along coastlines. But majority of the time, beaches are going to form where constructive waves are happening most of the year. So a constructive wave has not just a strong swash, but there's not as many waves. So we say that they've got a low frequency or a long wavelength because there's a long distance between the peak of one wave and the peak of the next wave. They're not very tall, so the wave height is generally under a meter. And these are the waves that you'd usually associate with a calm sea. The opposite of this, the destructive waves, are going to take more sand off the beach. So that would have a stronger backwash and a weak swash. So it's going to take more sediment back into the sea. And the opposite is true. So they tend to have a short wavelength. So there's lots of waves coming in at the same time. And they have a long wave height or high wave height, sorry. Meaning that there's more waves coming on the beach, taking more sand off the beach at the same time. The second feature that we're going to look at are spits. And spits are closely linked to longshore drift, which we've discussed in a previous lesson. So as we know, longshore drift is the process of material being moved along the beach in a zigzag pattern in the same direction as the prevailing wind. But when longshore drift reaches a change in coastal direction, so on here we've got uh, the coast running from what looks like sort of uh, west to south, it then starts to move northeast. But that wind direction is not going to change along the coast as well. It's going to stay roughly the same. So that means instead of this long shot drift just continuing around the corner and going this way, it's going to start moving out into sea. Now, there's no beach here. It was once water. So what's going to end up happening is that material is just going to be deposited into the sea. And it will build up over time. And all that deposited sand or material that's been brought down this beach will just keep being deposited here until it crests above the sea level, over the water level. And at that point, the longshore drift will continue a little longer along that bit that's just been developed and then dump more into the sea. And that continues until it develops a stretch of land, this fin bar that sticks out from the coast. And that is a spit. Now, when it gets too far out, it could be into the mouth of a river where it reaches the sea. This could be an estuary or just could be a turn in the coastline. But the wind direction will eventually change. And when it does, it's going to change the direction at which longshore drift is going to deposit that material into the sea. So you start to see this curve happening here. And this is called a hook when it starts to curve. So here's another example. So we've got our coastline and all that longshore drift is deposited into the sea. We've come so far out that the wind direction's changed. So all of that beach material is now coming along at a different angle. So this is the hook. Behind the spit, this area here is not getting waves brought in from the sea. And so this is more calm and still, still waters. So what ends up happening is all of the 
still material, all of the sediments are going to start building up. And because it's not getting constantly battered by the waves, it means that vegetation will start to take hold as well. So this becomes a marsh. So a marsh is like a long grasses with loose soil or sand build up around it as well. And over time, that will eventually all start to become a marsh and could eventually become solid land as well. Next up are offshore bars. So they're formed by deposition as well. They look very similar to spits, but they are different. So uh, offshore bars are running parallel to the coast. Spits tend to uh, work at right angles. The offshore bar is this length of sand here. And I've got a cross section here. So imagine a line being drawn from here all the way out to there. And that's what we've got here in reverse. So we've got the beach, which is this bit here. We've got the offshore bar, which is this bit here. So offshore bars occur where we find the destructive waves more. So we've got waves at high tide would bring water and sediment up onto the beach. But because we're going to have more destructive waves at this location, then what's going to happen is more beach material is going to be brought off during the backwash and brought back into the sea. Now, particularly when the tide starts to go back out, what could happen is when waves bring that material back down, it's going to get trapped and lose energy and it's going to deposit it just off the shore. And that will continue to happen until it builds up this mound here, which is called an offshore bar. So they tend to only be visible at low tide, but the higher ones can also be visible at high tide as well. So they occur in areas where we've got a stronger backwash, destructive waves. And finally, we have rock pools. So rock pools are formed by erosion and they occur on wave cut platforms. So we can see our diagrams here and this relates to this wave cut platform we can see in the picture here. So this is a large rock pool, but you can see small examples of these as well. So during high tide, when the wave cut platform has been covered by the sea, the small debris, such as these pebbles in the diagram here, are going to be brought onto the wave cut platform. And as the tide comes back out, they're going to be dragged back off it. As they've been dragged back off, they start to uh, do the circular motion, which is called an eddy. So an eddy is a bit like the idea of this pebble being drilled down in circular motions into the wave cut platform. So it's a bit like sanding and drilling into it. And you imagine that happening hundreds and thousands of times each day with lots of different pebbles in lots of different locations. Over time, that's going to start wearing away at the rock. The bigger that rock pool becomes, the more stones and pebbles can get into it and it starts to widen the rock pool over time as well. Well, that's it for today, but continue your revision by completing the now try tasks for homework. Class dismissed.